Day of Wrath, the DS Irae. The medieval Day of Judgment as a metaphor for the impending calamity humanity faces. Well, at least in the original conception there was delivery and salvation for a few souls. The economic and political system that we live under is destroying our planet and, if left to its own exploitative desires and devices, it will soon destroy its originators. This free market, neoliberalism, free enterprise economy, laissez-faire model, call it what you like, the differences are as the differences between the varied shades of the Abrahamic faiths. They all maintain the same core underpinning foundation to variously ornate or austere architectures. But despite the incessant onanistic devotions of its adherents, capitalism isn't a religion. Capitalism isn't even a faith. It has surpassed those stages of development and is now fully at the level of a deranged and impending implosive death cult. Billions unwittingly worship this cult and support it uncritically, deferring to the supposed intellectual authority of its economics department academia priests with their mysterious cult language that proposes their natural order and alleged rationalism, continuing to insist that it alone is the only true path to not only economic but social freedom. Its acolytes repeat its cliched mantras without critical analysis, like a sacred liturgy. Capitalism since its origins in 16th century European mercantilism, always seeks to grow, to profit, to enable it to grow and to profit. And in the four to five centuries since that sick seed was first sown, it has exhausted the potential mine of exploitable resource, both material and now human. We currently extract resources at a rate of exploitation that exceeds the capacity to replace them. But this increasing scarcity that in any other circumstance would be seen as a suggestion towards moderation is in the mind of the capitalist seen only as an opportunity to price gouge and profit. Climate change disasters are good for free market capitalism. They're seen as an opportunity. We need to limit global warming to a maximum increase of one and a half degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. And it needs to be done at the very latest with the most optimistic predictions by 2050. Currently, the average global temperature on Earth has increased by just over one degree Celsius since 1880. Two thirds of that warming has occurred since 1975 and it continues at a rate of roughly 0.15 to 0.2 degrees per decade. Work out the numbers. And you see that 2050 is cutting a pretty fine line. Confutatis maledictis, when the wicked are confounded. We need the culture of community. We do not need the cult of individualism. The cult of the self at the expense of the group is what has brought us to this critical historical juncture and we have two choices. We can work together as a natural body to survive and grow or we can fracture into artificially constructed divisions and blow away like dust.
There is more that unites us than unties us, particularly when we examine the near future's designs on the living biosphere. The future will only be post-capitalist, because the alternative is nothing. It can be achieved through consensus and preempt the worst environmental cataclysms that are currently predicted, or it will be the natural outcome of humanity's extinction. That is the choice that we, the next few generations, face.